Mary Ellen Mark is widely recognized as one of our most respected and influential photographers. For over three decades, her pictures have reflected a wide spectrum of the human experience. Her images of the world's diverse cultures have become landmarks in the field of documentary photography. Her new book, American Odyssey, features some of those photographs taken in the United States over the past 35 years. I am pleased to have her here to talk about some rather remarkable photographs. One thing for sure, they will never talk about you and describe you as a celebrity photographer. No, I'm not a celebrity. No, no, that Although, is not. I, in order to support myself, I do do portraits of celebrities. You do? I do. For what? Well, for all different magazines, um, for sometimes for Vanity Fair or for Harper's Bazaar or Rolling Stone, um, Us Magazine. Because the business has changed so much since I started. I assume this photograph is on this cover because it is a favorite of yours. Otherwise, there's it, something it, terribly wrong here. It's a picture I like. Yeah. But I, I put it on the cover because I thought it was very American. It was really symbolic of America. And at the same time, I think it has a tough edge to it. This was in, in Bourne, Texas, a small rodeo, very end of the trip. And I was terrified of bull riding. It was it's a severely violent and dangerous sport. And here were children, bull riders. And I saw these these kids, they were so macho and tough and you know, wanted to project how strong they were that I took the the picture. And I, I think it would mean they're now teenagers. So um, I, I felt it was there's something about the picture that's that's Funny and yet not so funny. Ironic. Here is the homeless Dam family in 1987. Am yeah. I saying that right, Dam family? That's the Dam family. Okay, 1987. Take a look at this. Now tell me about this family and tell me about what we're going to be seeing in this and a series of three photographs. Um, this was an assignment for Life magazine in 1987. Uh, Peter Howell gave me the assignment. He was the photo editor then. And they did a lot of research to find a homeless family. I mean, it was just at the beginning when homelessness was becoming a major conscious thing in, in culture, a story. Um, and this family, uh, what was extraordinary about them is that from the very moment I met them, they gave me total access to their lives. So the first night I arrived in California, I went to this motel where they were staying, which was like a shelter motel. At four in the morning, I knocked on their door, and I went in their bedroom. And I started to work with them. And I was at with four in the morning? At four in the morning. Why, why did you do that? Because I wanted to... Part of the arrangement was that they would give me total access to their lives. And I wanted to start from the very beginning... Of the day? Of the night. Of the night. <laughs> and, and show that I really did want total access. And it was fine. And from then on, they were used to me being around all the time. So that was basically... I woke them up, actually. Yeah. So basically, you create the notion that I'm going to be here all the time, any time, every time access means this, me showing up at 4 a.m. in the morning to photograph Anytime. you. Anytime. We followed them around um, in their car for a week. What's in it for them? I, you know, that's, a, that's a really good question. Um, their lives are really important to them. It, it, what's in it for them is their lives being recognized and saying, you know, here I am. Um, this is me and this is how I live. Most people like the Dam family are really ignored. I mean, it's the worst to feel that you're either it's ignored or you ignored. don't matter or nobody cares about you and no one knows you. It's not about celebrity. Mm -hmm. It's about no one knows it's you. It's about, like, here I am. This is how I live. This is how I have to live. Yeah. Next slide. We'll see them in 1994, seven years later. So I, I kept in contact with them for seven years, and I definitely wanted to go back and photograph them. And the magazine sent me back there in 1994, and I found them in a period of time where they were in great chaos. They were living, squatting on an abandoned ranch in the high desert in California. And again, I just stayed with them. Why are they homeless? Um, they're homeless because the whole idea of being able to, to cope with life is very complicated. And there was also a, a drug problem. Um, that definitely was part of it. And um, when I came back, they had two more children. And um, this, in this moment, Linda is just completely, you know, she's high, and the kids are just crazed. It was... Okay, next slide, 58. Uh, this is the damn family again in 1994. Um, this is probably one of the hardest pictures I ever had to take, but I felt I had to take it. And I, I 
came to their house. I stayed in a motel down the road because there was actually no place to sleep in their house. And I came to their house about 5.30 in the morning and I walked in the bedroom. And I, Chrissy was, was in bed with, with Dean and Linda. And um, it's kind of... Why is it hard? It's hard because it's really an enigma, this picture. You don't quite understand what's happening, um, whether there's abuse, whether there's right. not abuse. And I just think the that eyes are her powerful. eyes are just powerful. Next picture is four, streetwise in 1983. That's tiny. I met her uh, when she was 13 years old. Um, right. I still know her. I just photographed her about a month ago again. In, in, uh, she lives in Seattle. So she now has five children. She's pregnant. She's going to have her sixth child. Yeah. Um, the life has been tough for her. She's trying to survive, um, but it's tough. She hasn't been able to make as, as good a jump as Linda Dan has. Because? Because she has all these children and a lot of stress in her life. Her kids are wonderful. They're, the kids are really beautiful. Next picture is uh, tiny at, at 30 in 1999. Yeah, and that's Lashandra. She's 12. Old, yeah. And um, she's a beautiful kid. For Next the picture. Go ahead. Uh, now I was just saying, for the first time when I went back this time, I felt I could really relate to Tiny as an adult. Before, I treated her like a child. But suddenly she was an adult. The full reality was there. This was this year. This year. Okay. Ever since before that, I was, she was always treated her like a kid. Next, Next picture. Harlem Street Life in 1966. That was six, yes. 66. 66. Oh, that was when I first came to New York and I used to wander around Central Park and just take pictures. Hasn't what changed kind of camera that much. do you have? Uh, then I was a Leica. Today? Um, now I use all different kinds of cameras. I, I use a Hasselblad and I have, uh, for 35 millimeter, I have Canons and Leicas and then I use a 4x5. Next one is Violent Children in 1990. These are violent children in 1990. Well, this was, an, again, an assignment for Life magazine. Um, it was a story on problem children. And Amanda, who was absolutely a wonderful kid. The one on the uh, right or left? Uh, the one on, on the right. Yeah. Um, I went to her house one day, and, and just uh, smoking was part of her lifestyle. She was only nine. <laughs> smoking. At smoking nine. at nine. Uh, next one is, viol is, is the Aaron Nations in 1986. Yeah, those are Aryan wives. And, and um, that was a really uh, interesting experience. Um, I've gone to a couple of clan gatherings to photograph, and, and they are it's very strange because you're always on the outside. And they made me stay outside the, the gathering, but people came out, they wanted to be photographed. These were the, these were the wives of three very important people in the, in the movement, the Aryan Nation movement. And the woman on the right, is um, her name is Debbie Matthews. Yeah. She was married to Bob Matthews. He was, the, um, he was the head of a group called The Otter. And in the early 80s, um, they killed uh, the Denver talk show host. I remember the story. So then he was, he was as killed. As he walked outside his apartment. Yeah, as he walked. Him. And then she went on to, um, I think she lived with the man that recently shot those children in Los Angeles. Um, so pretty violent women. Next pretty one scary. in Vietnam, pro-demonstration in 1968. I used to go to all these extraordinary demonstrations in the 60s. I mean, that was such a, such a special time. And um, I remember at one of these demonstrations, some man came after me with a big pole. And just, uh, it was faces pretty violent. Always, the faces are always stunning. Mm. Next one is Edgar Berg, Rural Poverty in 1990. Um, this was part of a project this, on poverty in America. Um, this is in Kentucky. I think it's near Harlan County, somewhere near Harlan County, Kentucky. Uh, this was a family, and I, I saw them at a gathering, and I really wanted to photograph them. So I went to their house, and they were all inside, and the only one that came out was this, this boy. And there's something about the kitten and the boy that was so strikingly similar that that's the reason I took the picture. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.